Hi, I'm Simon Allingworth. I'm a multi-award winning photographer and educator. I teach over 100 workshops a year in London for both the Amersham Studios and for the Royal Photographic Society. And in this beginner's street photography workshop, I want to teach you the culmination of my experience and all of my secrets. So, what is street photography? Street photography is a fabulous, fabulous genre. I absolutely adore it. Basically, it is going out into the streets and photographing moments, things of interest, anything that's candid and generally not set up. It doesn't have to be in the street. So let's think about this. Let's say you go to the zoo and obviously if you take pictures of the animals in the zoo, that's not street photography. But if you step back and you start taking pictures of people and their interactions with animals and how they you know, and try to tell the story of that, then although you're at the zoo, that would be street photography. So it's generally about perspective and having something to say or saying something. The exception to this candid factor is street portraits. And that's where we would stop somebody in the street, say, wow, you look great, and take a picture of them. That would be with their permission. That might take a minute or two just to do the whole get the permission have a chat tell them what we're trying to do and take a picture and we look at some examples of that and we look at some ways of how to approach people towards the end of this the one thing that it doesn't say online about street photography and i think is probably more interesting is that i think street photography often says more about the photographer and their view of the world than it necessarily says about the subjects so some Photographers are great. They're good at going out and finding those humorous moments because they're quite funny people. Other people, it's all about finding light and shape and shadow and form or making a political statement. So I think as you develop in street photography, you'll start to develop a voice and you'll start to start to make statements with your photographs. And then it gets very interesting indeed. So let's look at some great images uh, and have a conversation and think about those images. This first one on the screen uh, did very well recently in the IPA Awards this year, and it's shot in uh, Tate Modern. And it's a, one of the three methods that we're gonna talk about is uh, pre-visualization. And this is a pre-visualization shot, and we'll talk about what that means and how that's done a little later. But this is a pre-visualized shot where we're taking our time and we're, we're creating something. We're waiting for a moment. Um, but I love it, and what I love about it I love the geographical shapes and nature of it. I love that the lines run perfectly into the corner. Composition's really nailed down on this one. And that took a little bit of time. And then I like the way that my, my person, who is secondary really to the story, the story is the story of the architecture. Um, and the, second, the person who is secondary is walking into the scene. We're purposefully masking his identity, or her identity, I'm pretty sure it's a man. And that sort of, that begs the question, who is it? And I think that sort of makes the picture more interesting that we can't see their face uh, or anything about them. So it sort of leaves a bit of a gap for the viewer to fill in. Shot in black and white, and that is black and white, out of camera, JPEG, no post-processing, okay? So that's getting it right in camera, literally, shot, done. Simple as that, and we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, another image we did quite well in the IPA is a street portrait. Uh, and this is Rafe, and I love this picture of him. He was such a great character. So we've walked around uh, a corner, and he stood under a bridge at 11 in the morning, um, having a cigarette, and he's wearing a black dress and a fur wrap, uh, surrounded by graffiti, um, under a bridge in Shoreditch. And I'm stood there, I've got 10 other photographers behind me, and um, I spot him, rock up and have a chat, get on straight away, and um, I move him. So I, I look at, while I'm talking to him, I'm looking in behind him and I don't like the, the background. So I've decided, as I walked up, I spotted a background that I really like. I move him so he's framed by the graphics, he's framed by the graffiti. Um, and we're under a bridge, so we've got light coming in from both sides. It's only natural light, we're not using any speed lights or anything technical. So it's just natural light. And I just get him to move his head slightly and 
I give him a slightly flirty look. He gives me a slightly flirty look, and the moment happens. And when I, he when, when I take those sort of pictures, I hear that, ah, noise of angels. And this was definitely a noise of angels picture. I just loved it from the start. Again, it's JPEG out of camera. So all of the coloration and processing is done pre-processing, and we'll talk about this later, in camera, OK? So that's literally JPEG out of camera, once again. So this next one, also love. Um, and this is where I'm using handheld um, long exposure um, to try and get some dynamic movement into a picture. And um, I quite like the 50 shades of grey. I like all the leading lines that take you into the picture. I like the, the general graphical nature. I like the 50 shades of grey, although it actually says 50 shades of Gary. Uh, but I tried to position the bike over it so it looked like 50 shades of grey. And clearly, it's a picture that I couldn't really process in colour. Um, but it actually looks much better in black and white. So again, it's a picture I love. And I think it's just it's got a feel of uh, dynamicity. And it's nicely formed. Lots of leading lines. It's just a great street picture. Sort of thing that I would natively shoot and enjoy. Again, it's a, it's a pre-visualised picture. Because I'm sat camping out waiting for something to happen in that space waiting for a moment to occur as somebody cycles through. So this next one I absolutely adore as well but this is a candid moment. So this is where I'm walking along, I see it, uh, an opportunity, I pre-visualise it in my mind, make a couple of settings, take the picture, possibly I think I took two actually, um, and walk on. So it's a very quick instant moment. And what I love about these two people is that they're sat so far apart. They're polarised on that bench. They couldn't get any further apart. And we've got, you know, two different sort of classes or races or I don't know. It almost feels slightly like a um, American um, apartheid sort of, you know, it, it, it's got a slight race feel to it. And I just like it. It just says something to me. I like the clock in the background. I just like the whole thing. It just, as I walked past it, I just thought, oh, love it, I need that in my life. And I took it and it's great. Again, JPEG out of camera, simple shot, absolutely love it. Again, this was um, a pre-visualized shot because I saw the space and the space was basically on South Bank and they are women's poems from war-torn nations hanging. Um, and I just picked up a, a second-hand Leica an M9 that I'd pay ten and a half thousand pounds for, second hand, with just one 50 mil lens. Um, and I tried, I shot one thing on the bus with it on the way there. And I literally, this, this lady just stepped into view, took the picture, heard the noise of angels, um, and it did quite well in the Sony's, which was quite nice. After that, I had a nightmare with my uh, Leica. I never quite got on with it. It was just too inconsistent. Um, so that was my flirtation as opposed to a marriage with uh, Leica. Here's quite a simple shot on the face of it. Uh, we've got a, a shady, dark character, not shady in negative, but shady is in, you know, dark and has dynamic movement through it. So is masked in identity. Um, and they're walking through the scene. They're quite a cool character and they're walking through. But then when your eye rests in the scene, and you look deeper into the scene, you'll see that there's um, a young boy coming up on the escalator who's looking, looking sort of at the, the person who actually is probably, in my interpretation, he's way cooler, and he's sort of looking slightly enviously at, you know, the sort of very together guy who's powerful and in frame and walking. So it's starting to build a bit of narrative. Um, so I really like that. That's a Southwark station um, near South Bank. So it's, again... Quite a simple picture, quite graphical in form, very simple, JPEG out of camera yet again, um, but it's starting to build a narrative, if that makes sense to you. Again, another one I love, this is uh, Tate Modern, and I love Tate Modern. Um, and this is, again, a pre-visualized shot, so I've found a space that I like, and I'm attracted to, and many photographers are, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, or the, the end of the frame. Um, and I've got my framing right and I'm waiting, waiting, waiting and this girl literally just stepped backwards into the space to exactly where I want her, funnily enough, and I think her boyfriend's taking a picture of her. Um, so she doesn't even, she's not even aware of me um, and I'm just quietly waiting. And what I really love about this is all of the 
converging lines that create a sort of vanishing point. And I like that the shadow of the woman looks almost like the face of a woman. And that's the shadow of a body, just the way it's panned out. There's, again, JPEG out of camera, no post. So, you know, I've not manipulated it in any way. And all of the, all the tones and all of the, all of the um, graduations, are all just literally out of camera, which are quite nice. Another thing a lot of people are attracted to in street photography is light um, and colour. Um, and, uh, you know, you, there's a bit of a mixture with mine. But this next one I shot um, last week, in fact, and this is shot through a window um, on my Soho night workshop. Um, and again, I just like the little narrative. We've got this girl in the foreground. We can't see who she is. She's got a back to us, which is intriguing. And there's sort of two men waiting for her in some way. Um, and I just, I just like it. I think it's a very simple picture, um, but it's starting to have some narrative in it. And the colours and the simple tones are really beautiful, the way that it's through the window and it's, it's got a real filmic feel about it, I would say. So it's, um, so whatever you, the great thing with the street is whatever you're attracted to, whether it's light or colour or shape or architecture or form or story or mm, documentary or just people, you can, you can find a place in street photography that will, f that will work for you. So I think street photography is a nice, broad, wide genre. And a lot of people have come from landscape where they're taking pictures of landscape but mm, aren't quite sure don't really want to talk, you know, they're, they're being, we're all behind a camera because we're a bit shy in some way, perhaps. So, you know, it's, it's streets, one of those great ways you can start to have people in your picture without having to hire a model and be very, you know, gregarious and having to speak to people. So it's, it's a soft approach to people. And a lot of people who come on the workshop, that tends to be, you know, the direction that they're heading. And this is my favourite picture of the moment. This again was shot uh, last Tuesday uh, while I was doing a one-to-one -one with um, an older gentleman in Tate Modern. Um, and this is mm, semi-pre-visualised, but it's, it, you know, I'd seen the, the it's basically a, a wall with um, a light box with slides on it. And um, I'd seen the girl, I'd already took a framing shot to decide what I was going to do because I was sort of talking him through it. And then this girl walked in and she's, she was just perfect. It was in every way, it was a gift. There was nothing more I would like from this person. That it, she was just fabulous and she just popped in and uh, you know, I, I was stood with him by my side and I've taken, I think, two or three images of this, um, but this was the one. And again, um, this is a more filmic uh, approach that I've been doing lately. So this has a touch of post in it um, and it's 16 by nine, so it's, it's got that um, wider cinematic feel where it perhaps feels like street photography but it's still from a film so it, it, you know it's trying to build some sort of insinuation of wider narrative perhaps so so I hope that's sort of given you a bit of an idea and again you know we all see the world differently and that's fabulous and and street photography is such a wide and broad genre I'm pretty sure you'll find something in it that you're going to love and just to sort of reiterate, I, I am a fairly successful um, wedding photojournalist. And the place, I, the place that I go and shoot stuff like this tends to be the street. I go and I experiment with the genre. I experiment with negative space and with angle and perspective. And I have great fun and I make great images. And that then transpires through to my commercial work. So, you know, it's stuff that I'm learning in the street and getting quicker with moment and just getting better all ends up earning money for me in terms of uh, wedding photojournalism. So I think even if it, street's not your primary genre, I still think there's a lot of value and it's a great playground. So we shall delve a bit deeper into uh, how you can shoot great images like this in a moment. 